a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver. Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show. This is uh, actually technically, uh, this is the first one of 2022. Uh, we had some technical difficulties last week and we ended up doing a replay. Uh, and I believe we have mushed the first two shows together, which being we have Matt Connerton from Matt Connerton Unleashed, uh, Monday through Friday uh, at WMNH. 95.3, uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, which you can listen to his drive by, uh, his, uh, drive time show four to six, uh, at mattconnerton.com. Uh, and I think we also have Lori Powers Auto on the phone, who was going to be my second week guest. And since we all know each other and we all love each other, we all decided to have a threesome. Hey, you guys <laughs> both there? Oh my. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, I will be, uh, uh, you'll be hearing from Lori later this month. So Matt, it's you and I. Sorry about that. I got you excited over nothing. Did you scare her off with the, th- the uh, threesome? Uh, well, maybe her husband was listening. He doesn't always have the same sense of humor as I do. Um, ah, <laughs> maybe he just doesn't want to share. Yeah, you know, you know how it goes. So... I Could have made it a foursome. No, oh, sorry. Well, yeah. Hey, you know that would work for me. I'm, you know, I'm all into flexibility, but you know, not yeah, everybody yeah. is as flexible as I am. Right. Uh, last time I checked, you were in that group, Matt. Uh, the not as flexible as I am group. Uh, <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. <laughs> ah, what's a boy to do? So moving right <laughs> along, how? Talk to me. How are you doing? How was your new year before we dig into the politics? Because there's a lot of it to dig into today. Well, New Year's wasn't that great. Uh, my my father uh, suffered another heart attack and is uh, currently at Mass General. Uh, he uh, went into the hospital on January 1st. So um, not to be a downer, but, uh, but he had to have a triple bypass and uh, the, the prognosis, the long-term prognosis is positive, but, uh, yeah, that was my new year's. <laughs> oh, I am sorry to hear about that. Thank uh, you. you. I, 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 I actually knew that that had happened cause I had reached out to you, but I wasn't sure whether you wanted to bring that up on the air or not. I figured I would leave that choice up to you. Uh, yes. <laughs> I was, I was trying to, I was actually trying to share some delicacy and sensitivity. I know that's amazing and unusual, but you know, I tried. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, th- there was, a, I have to tell you, there was a lot of heaviness around the holidays this year. Astrologically, the energies were very heavy. A lot of things were coming from the unknown into the known, in your father's case, it was a health issue, mm-hmm. um, you know, that came out and there was a lot of other different things. Um, unfortunately, going into the holidays of Christmas week, a longtime friend, uh, client and student, uh, her uh, 18-year-old son committed suicide. Oh, God. And, uh, and so... Obviously, uh, you know, and quite frankly, you know, she was reaching out and talking to me and the poor kid was reaching out and talking to me. Uh, And so I was kind of doing the in-between because she could feel him around, but she couldn't quite make out what he was trying to say. And unfortunately, you know, as often happens when people think that death is the answer, they die to find out it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, so there was a lot of that energy. There was a lot of energy that was, you know, we had some COVID in my family going on as well. Not my immediate family, Jeff and I are fine, but, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was just a, it was a, it was a, it was an emotionally heavy holiday for a lot of people. 
Yeah. And, you know, uh, and sometimes that's just the way things fall. Uh, but I'm glad to see that the long-term prognosis for your father is good uh, and that he's getting there. And so how are you doing if we put your father aside? Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm all right. You know, been a little stressed out about that. And, you know, and, and, and just the, the general pressures of life, you know, it, it's a, it's a busy life, which, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way except for the days that I feel like maybe I would have it another way, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> you know, so busy, what busy are as you, ever, but. I'm, well, that's good. Yeah. I and mean, it is good that you're busy and you're yeah. one of those people like me that for the most part, love what you do. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of joy in what you do. You know, I, I when things are heavy and going uh, to hell in a ham basket, and there was a lot of ham baskets over the holidays that I was helping my clients deal with. Um, but when, you know, is one of the things I always remind myself to be grateful for is I do what I love. I have joy in what I do and I get paid to, to be me. And mm -hmm. it doesn't get any better than that. And you yeah. sometimes you fall in that same category in a lot of ways. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm very blessed and very grateful. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so many people spend so large portions of their lives on a week to week basis doing something they hate with people that they hate, that they feel gives their life no meaning or purpose. And, uh, yeah, boy, thank God I'm not one of them. Uh, uh, it's, it, it, it's no way to it's no way to live, you know. People spend eight hours a day or more, you know, doing doing something they don't even enjoy, just day after day, week after week, year after year. It's uh, it, it's it's just not that's not living. It's existing or, or 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 living for the weekend, you know. People who you know they they do their nine to five that they don't actually enjoy, and then they. You know, they're just living for the weekend or living for that two week two week vacation every year, and it's like, uh, I, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Nope, nope. I did it a long time ago because I'm in my thirty second year of business. So yeah, it's yeah. been a long time since. Uh, it's been a long time since nine to five was my theme song. Um, yep. <laughs> and yours. You've been you've been at it what over ten years now, right? Oh, full time. Yeah. 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 So anyways, so sometimes that's what I remind myself that, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what's shitting the bed, at least I love what I do. I'm good at it. And I enjoy, I feel like it gives my life purpose and meaning. And so that immediately gives me the edge over where, what a lot of people are experiencing. Ah, platitudes. What would we do without them? Right. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So I have two or three things I want to talk about uh, politically, uh, but I'm going to open it up to you to see what you guys have been discussing on the show, see if you cover them. And if not, I'm going to make sure I bring them up starting somewhere in the middle of the second segment. But I always like to hear what what trash are you talking on the on the Connaughton show these days? You know, what we've been talking about a lot, and uh, this probably isn't something that uh, political talk shows typically uh, cover uh, podcasts, political podcasts do, but on FM radio probably doesn't get discussed much. But we've actually been talking um, about the subject of deplatforming. Um, I found myself in a situation where, you know, my show is uh, live on FM radio here in Manchester. And of course it streams on uh, a number of different internet stations and it's available as a podcast on all the platforms and all that. But, um, but I, I did experience, you know, we also stream the show live on Facebook on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And on Monday uh, I went to uh, stream the show live and Facebook was not allowing me to do it. And I realized that my account had been restricted. And so I can still do 
you know, I can do everything else. I can, I can share, I can post, I can comment, I can use messenger, I can like, but I cannot stream live from my account. And it turned out, um, I have some sort of violation, uh, from January 8th, but it doesn't tell me what it is. Doesn't tell me what it's about. Was it reported? Was it something that their bots flagged? Nothing. Just I have a violation and I'm restricted from live streaming for 30 days. Now, there's a way around that, of course. I just created an alt account and then I connected my alt account to the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And so the next day I was like right back to streaming live, even though I'm technically not supposed to be. I, I found a workaround. It's pretty simple. But th that's something I've been talking about a lot because. Um, you know, I always say these companies, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, of course, and, and others, they have a right to regulate their content however they want. They can restrict, they can deplatform, they can do whatever. That is their right as private companies. But I do share the frustration that a lot of people feel when um, you know, they're affected by this and, 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 you know, people depend on these platforms for their business. You know, my, my radio show does not, uh, because we have advertisers, so we don't monetize our, our content on Facebook or YouTube that way. Uh, we have sponsors and that's, that's how, you know, that's the business model that we use the more, you know, traditional radio model because we're a radio show technically, uh, not a podcast, but um, but there's a lot of podcasters who depend on these platforms for their for their revenue, and yeah, some of them are getting into trouble for doing very bad things, like spreading misinformation and disinformation about vaccines, for example. But some of them are getting in trouble for even discussing other people and actually trying to debunk the bad things that other people are doing. Uh, I'm a big fan of the David Pakman show and he relies on Facebook and YouTube and he just got a 90 day suspension from monetization on Facebook, not because he was spreading vaccine disinformation because he's very pro vaccine, but he was covering Alex Jones, a segment that Alex Jones had done about vaccines uh, Pacman was debunking what Alex Jones had said, but somehow a bot at Facebook, I guess it couldn't have been a real person because a real person hopefully would have understood what was really going on here. But some bot flagged the video is having medical misinformation. And now Pacman can't monetize his content for 90 days. So, you know, it's a double edged sword. You know, on the one hand, these companies have every right to do this, but at the same time, it, it's not it's not done in a way that's fair. Um, I got caught up in it uh, a few months ago uh, by YouTube. I got dinged by YouTube. I couldn't upload anything for two weeks. Uh, similar thing. I had I had uploaded a segment from my show talking about vaccines. Everybody on the show that day was pro vaccine. Um, there was no, you know, every, everybody in the room was, was pro vax, but there was a discussion about vaccine hesitancy and how best to address it. Well, apparently even discussing vaccine hesitancy, um, got us dinged the, the video it was flagged for medical misinformation. That's the, uh, that, that was the explanation YouTube gave. And, uh, in this case, there was an option to appeal it. So I appealed it and I explained it and uh, they did not accept the appeal. So I just couldn't upload anything for two weeks. And, you know, and again, I have other YouTube accounts to put content up on, but I wanted to put it on the IPM nation one, which is my main YouTube account. So, you know, so there's some very negative things going on here. And by the way, whatever that violation is from January 8th on Facebook, they're not even telling me what it is no clue what it is. It'd be helpful to know that I can make sure it doesn't happen again. All I know is something on January 8th, something bad, according to them. So, you know, now I'm just suspended from streaming, you know, quote unquote, suspended for 30 days. So, um, so that's actually been a, a big uh, topic of discussion on the show. Kevin, are you still there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting oh, because... Can you can hear me, right? I, I can hear you now. I think I lost you there for a minute. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, 
So it's interesting because just a couple of, it was last show or the show before, we were talking about how you had made the decision to not have conversations because sound clips were being used to take it out of context to make it look like you were, you know, a white supremacist because of the whole thing going oh. on in South Africa. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I forgot that we had discussed that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is another facet of this discussion. Yeah. Of, you know, it's, if you know how to play the bot game, there are lots of ways to get around and put misinformation out. And they're very, very focused on vaccines for misinformation. Mm-hmm but they're still saying they have no accountability for all the misinformation they put out on January 6th. Right. You know, because they're, they're, they're being gone after that. They promoted Facebook and other social media promoted a whole stream of misinformation about the election. Yeah. They certainly allowed it to happen. Yeah. The last thing I saw was there was an accusation that they actually, in some kind of logarithm or whatever. Algorithm? Uh, I can't think of, algorithm. Logarithm. Algorithm. <laughs> My age is showing. Uh, so uh, that they actually did things to, like, promote those things in their uh, algorithm. I don't yeah. know if you didn't see that, but, you know, so, of course, they're denying that. But so now they're jumping really hardcore on the vaccine thing. But I think that it's partially a misdirection because they could really get screwed on the and rightfully so. I'm not sure that it's screwed, but they could really get taken to task on everything that they were doing leading up to January 6th as, as a participant of it. Mm-hmm. Cause that's some of the noise they're making. And so they're hopping on knowing that the people most likely to go after them for January 6th misinformation are going to kind of give them credit for their stopping misinformation about vaccines on the thing. I mean, it's a game. But, I mean, does that make sense when I say it that way? No, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I, yeah. But it's, it's just frustrating the way they go about this. I, I wish there were, you know, I mean, first of all, especially with, with Facebook, who, you know, sometimes they don't even tell you. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't even tell you what the problem is. And then you would think that there would be an option to appeal it like there is with YouTube. And then you would think that, okay, maybe a bot catches it, but then when you appeal it, it should be an actual human at that point reviewing your content. But clearly it's still a bot. You know, when I made my appeal with YouTube because, you know, I didn't get through to anybody as far as explaining what was going on. And then, you know, and I find myself, you know, there's a lot of these, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not right wing. I'm not a conservative, but there's a lot of these conservative content creators who are complaining about um, how they're being treated by these social media companies that, you know, I can't help but feel some sympathy for them, even though I detest some of their content. It's like, you know, you can even not be doing what they're doing and still get in trouble. And, uh, and it's a real problem. And something I've started doing recently, and I'm going to be doing more of it is I've actually started joining some of these, um, uh, platforms that cater to people who are right wing. Uh, even though I'm not right wing, I'm sort of, uh, uh, polluting their pool a little bit just because I want to have some place to put my content just in case. I get deplatformed somewhere else. So, for example, Rumble.com, which is, you know, similar, works similar to YouTube, but um, but it's heavily populated by conservatives and alt-right people because they don't police their content. So you can put whatever you want to there. It's not going to get taken down. 
I, I opened a Rumble account, and I've started uploading my videos to there at the same time that I'm putting them on YouTube just so I have a place for them where I know they're not going anywhere. Plus, it is kind of fun, you know, to just, you know, because I know that some right-winger is going to come across something that I've uploaded, and they're going to start watching it thinking that it's something they're going to like, and they're going to end up being infuriated by my content. I get a, a little bit of a... a chuckle out of that you know but i'm gonna but i'm gonna be doing more of that i'm gonna be joining getter which is for conservatives i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep doing that you know hey infiltrate infiltrate yes who knows <laughs> we'll be right back for the next segment of the dr kevin show here on own time conscious media for conscious minds Ohm times have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going Om? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4pm Pacific Time, 7pm Eastern Time every Thursday and together we can discover what's really going on. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Home Time. Here on the second Thursday of the month, in the first month of the year, we are having our normally first Thursday of the month, Matt Connerton here to talk to us about what's going on in the world uh, and share some of what happens on the Matt Connerton uh, live show. Uh, Matt Connerton Unleashed. Do you still call it Matt Connerton Unleashed? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Matt Connerton Unleashed, 4 to 6 Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday on 95.3 WMNH. And you can go to mattconnerton.com if you want to listen to the show live. And call in. Speaking of calling in, you can call into this show tonight live at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. So are, do you think we should have increased accountability for these social media giants? Have we reached that point or is it so, okay. I I get very very uh, nervous about um, the government getting involved in holding these companies accountable. Um, I I would rather the free market do that, and I and I think there is a lot of that. You know, there's been a lot of outrage at Facebook as some of this information has come out about how their algorithms work, um, especially with Instagram. Uh, TikTok has faced a lot of backlash, um, you know, they, because they are, they are, d d these platforms are deplatforming people. They're actively going after people. Again, some of it is hitting the wrong people, 
but they are doing it. But I get very nervous when anyone wants to try to make laws or regulations about it um, because I don't, you know, uh, as much as, uh, well, let me put it this way. I mean, I'm not an anti-government person in the sense that uh, I don't think, you know, I'm not like, hey, let's get rid of the government. Let's get the government out of everything. No, we need the government to regulate certain things. But when it comes to regulating, see, if you have, if you start making laws about what these social media companies can and can't do, then you start to, you know, you're making laws about speech. And I have, I have First Amendment uh, concerns there. Also, too, I am not in favor of getting rid of Section 230. I know that uh, during the 2020 election, that was one of the very few things that Trump and Biden agreed on was they both did want to repeal Section 230 for different reasons. And I think they were both wrong about it. Section 230, of course, if you repeal that in theory, then these social media companies would be vulnerable to lawsuits because they would be vulnerable or criminal criminal prosecution in theory because uh, they would be held liable for the content that is on their platforms, which means they would have to actually police uh, what everybody uh, is posting on their platforms to an extent where it would simply be impossible and completely impractical. And I think it would be the end of social media. So, um, so no, I'm not in favor of the government getting involved. I think we can put adequate pressure on these companies. And I think it's already happening through the free market. Um, you know, to, to do the right thing, like taking down misinformation about January 6th or about vaccines and so forth. Um, so I think that's the way to go. But I think we also need to, um, there needs to be some way to hopefully put some pressure on them to start being a little bit smarter about how they do it and stop hitting the wrong targets. So at the onset, I am going to say I would also be very uncomfortable with the government because I would not trust that there were no hidden agendas in whoever was in power in whatever sure. way laws were created. Mm -hmm. I don't I, I don't trust I don't trust our government to be truly um, fair. Agree and, and things like this. So yep. uh, I'm 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 not in favor of that. What I would be in favor of is you can't sue Facebook, but if you're going to put something out in a public forum like that, we do have libel laws. Mm -hmm. We do have laws about inciting riots creating dangerous situations. There yes. are certain things, and I think that social media companies need to be held accountable that you can't post these things with a level of being anonymous that doesn't allow those lawsuits to happen against the people that posted it. Mm -hmm. That's the place where I dig in and go, if somebody, if somebody posts something, if somebody puts something to a social media feed and you can prove that it is completely libelous, that you can prove that it was completely, that it was endangering people, like spreading lies about, uh, you know, that, that, that encouraged hate crime and stuff like this, that you cannot do it and be an anonymous face. Sure. That's the place I would like to see stronger restrictions and things. If you're going to post on a public forum, there has to be a level of people get to find out who you are. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think if that happened, you would see a drastic change in social media. It wouldn't end it. But I think that it would have a cleaning up agent if people knew that they could actually be discovered and held accountable for what they said. Yeah. So what do you think of that? That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. That's my problem. Uh, you know, 
Um, it, it, it's such a different world, and so many of the laws that were created were created, you know, I mean, technically, the New York Times 100 years ago could have posted a letter in the paper that had accusations or made statements, excuse me, that were patently wrong about the Spanish flu and had no way to verify who actually wrote the letter, no matter whose name was signed to it, but at least they had a letter. Yeah. I mean, there was some something. So anyway, those, those are my thought processes on it. So let's move on to some of the politics that's going on. So I got an interesting email and I'm going to, it's really funny because Lori texted me and says that she can't even listen to our radio show right now. She, she hmm. texted me because she thought she had screwed up because her and I had dinner this week and originally she was going to be our second of the month. And when we couldn't do the show last week, I'd already booked her for this week. And I said, don't worry. You know, I was like, if you want to come on with Matt, you know, Matt, with the three of us could have a great time. And she goes, yeah, but you guys mostly talk politics. She goes, I, I'm just not sure that I, how much I'll be into that. And I said, well, if you change your mind, dial in. And so when I dialed in, Chris, our producer said that Lori was on. And I was like, oh, that's great. That's fabulous. And then when there was no response, I texted her. And she goes, no, I'm eating dinner. And I, besides, I thought you said Matt was on this week. And I'm like, yeah, but you called in. So I thought maybe you changed your mind. But now she's texted me and said she can't even hear the show. She's trying to tune into the show to listen to it. She can't even tune into it. So I don't know what the technical thing is. I don't know if she's, technical... say, she's saying it's she's saying it's not working. Yeah, she says it's weird that she can't even listen to it. Okay. So I will let her know that. I just wanted to pass that on. Uh, that she can, uh, if she wants to, she can listen to it on the website right now. Yeah, I have no way of knowing because I'm on the show. We're doing the show, so I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I just, you- I, I just pulled it up on my computer here. I'm not hearing anything. Huh. Oh, now I'm hearing it. And I'm okay, good. To- there we go. Well, okay. It may just be a technical glitch on Lori's side. I'm just passing it on. I would hate to. I'd hate to think that all of our fabulous words are not being sent out into the universe to make a difference. Right, Matt? That's right. <laughs> yes. Just say yes. Just say yes, Matt. No. Uh, so <laughs> are you familiar at all with, um, her name is Heather Cox. I think it's Heather Cox Richardson. Um, Heather Cox Richardson. She does a daily letter about what's going on politically, and she usually does a lot of backup information. She does a daily email. Are you familiar I'm not familiar, not familiar with her at all, no. Oh, I should forward it to you because she does a lot of good work. Like she'll dig into the background of an issue. She'll talk about like where the laws came from, what's going on in the world, what's going on politically. Um, and she does a daily email, and I get it because I I love it. It seems like it puts it all in a kind of a stack for me. I'll forward you one. Okay. So, um, but she was talking about the Freedom to Vote Act. So, um, she was talking about some of the, how much have you looked at the Freedom to Vote Act? Because of course, now, uh, the dingaling in Arizona, Kristen, some cinema, cinema. Yeah. Yes. Is saying that she won't, won't support the shift in the filibuster so they can get this voted for. Right. Though actually, if any Republican would break ranks, they would still have enough to do this. It doesn't have to be Democrats. I mean, I would just, laugh my took us off if a couple of the Republicans that have now kind of come out to speak against Trump or say, hey, we got to let it go. The election was fair and square. The guy in South Dakota did that. And of course, he 
you know, got the usual Trump trash talk. That's a, and it's, I like that. Trump, Trump trash talk. I, that's going to mm. ring to it. I think that's good, don't you? Yeah, uh, it is. <laughs> Trump, Trump trash talk. Uh, but you know who I'm talking about. He he actually came out and said, we got to let that go. It was fair and square. We got to move on. And of course, then Trump, you know, talks about how, you know, the guys that dig a ling or whatever. I mean, he just does the Trump thing. Um, but if I, I, I would just laugh, laugh my butt off if they brought it up and just enough Republicans jumped on because if they're on the wrong side of Trump, these these laws, these gerrymandering laws that are going in on these states are definitely supporting the pro-Trumpers. It's definitely oh. going to solidify Trump owning the party. Oh, yeah. It's so, the cult of Trump. Yeah. And there are some people trying to break away from it. Obviously, Liz Cheney, uh, the other guy that's on the January 6th, now this guy from South Dakota. There's been yeah. another one in Pennsylvania that's spoken out. Mitch McConnell seems to definitely be distancing himself. But have you looked at what the Freedom to Vote Act is actually doing? I haven't. Like I mean, I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at it in detail, but you know, it's it's obviously it's an attempt to federalize some of these protections to vote so that uh, individual states can't make laws like, you know, for example, you can't uh, pass out water and food to people while they wait in line to vote, things like that. Yep. Well, I, she actually summarized up what the talking points were. I don't know if I want to take the time to go through all of them, though it's really not all that long. Mm -hmm. um, but I just thought it was interesting. Um, the thing is, with towns of more than 3,000 people, uh, that at least two weeks of early voting for any town of more than 3,000 people, including on nights and weekends for at least 10 hours a day, it permits people to vote by mail or drop their ballots off in either a polling place or a drop box, and it guarantees that those votes will be counted. Um, it provides uniform standards for voter IDs in states that require them. It cracks down on voter suppression. It makes it a federal crime to lie to voters in order to deter them from voting, including distributing official looking flyers with wrong dates for an election or location of a polling place, for example. It increases penalties for voter intimidation. It restores federal voting rights for people who have served time in jail, creating a uniform system out of the current patchwork one. It requires states, now this one I think would, this to me is a hard sell, it requires states to guarantee that no one has to wait more than 30 minutes to vote. Oh, wow. I yeah. Uh, uh, it establishes automatic voter registration at state departments of voter vehicles, permits same-day voter registration, allows online voter registration, protects voters from purges that have plagued voter registration for decades now, requiring that voters be notified if they're dropped from the rolls and given information on how to get back on them. It bans partisan gerrymandering. gerrymandering. Um, it requires that any entity that spends more than $10,000 in an election to disclose all its major donors. Uh, mm. It makes it harder for political action committees to coordinate candidates. It beefs up the power of federal election commission that ensures candidates run their campaigns legally. Uh, it protects local election officers from intimidation and for firing of partisan purposes. It expands penalties for tampering with ballots. It's also going to require that voting machines spit out a paper copy. Uh, it um, also prevents attempts to overturn elections by requiring audits after elections. So we'll move on to something else, but those are some of the highlights. And some of those I didn't, I don't know about you, but I didn't know it was part of this bill. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. We will be right back for the last segment of The Dr. Kevin Show. The Real Conscious Connection. 
Om Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in Sub Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Own Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk Walk a mile mile in my my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last segment of the first of the year Dr. Kevin show on the second Thursday of the month in 2022 here at Home Times. It is a live call-in show, and you may call in at 202-570-7057. As usually uh, with the first show of the month, the first live show of the month, I have Matt Connerton from Matt Connerton Unleashed. You can hear Matt from Monday uh, through Friday, 4 to 6 Eastern Standard Time, drive time at uh, WMNH 95.3 Manchester, New Hampshire, or you can go on to mattconnerton.com and you can listen to his show live and you can also call in or bot chat in to him or whatever if you'd like to be part of his conversation. Matt, so um, I... I don't know if you had any thoughts about uh, that voter registration law or if you wanted to move on to something else. I mean, there was a, a couple of other things that stood out. Of course, I am a huge fan, as you know, we've had this conversation many times of automatic voter registration. I mean, like all the things are in place. Mm-hmm. We, we choose to keep it archaic because we want it difficult because it serves the politicians or some politicians. But anyways, thoughts. Well, I, I think I think the only the only thing I would add is uh you know, I really uh I had both uh positive and negative thoughts on Biden's uh speech uh that he gave uh about this. I I thought the speech itself was really really good, but uh I thought it should have been done at least 6 months ago. And I don't uh I don't understand. I mean, I, I kind of understand why it took so long, but this should have been a front burner priority. And I think the president uh, should have, uh, you know, stepped up on this a hell of a lot sooner. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I I question if he thought pumping stuff in through to the economy was a more immediate need because of how much everything was floundering due to the pandemic. And Mm -hmm. that made him short sighted to the fact that yes, the economy definitely needed help, but he spent a lot of political capital to make that happen, which is now he's coming up short with political capital to make sure that this voting thing happens. Of course, there are rumors and there are grumbles that a lot of these states are going to get challenged by the feds about the legality of these laws they've passed. But we don't know how that will turn out, especially with Mm -hmm. our current Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So anyways, so now I want to ask you, 
about so why do you think cinema is is i mean like joe seems like he's waffling a little bit and of course his coal miners are are in direct opposition with his coal mine owners and so you know one of them writes the checks but the other one has an awful big voting group and if he pisses them off he could end up in trouble um but what do you think her deal is about the filibuster do you think she's got any legs to stand on or do you think there's another game going on there i think the uh i think the argument that she made in in her speech today um i think the argument she made is actually very strong i ultimately disagree um but i think i think the argument that she made was was very strong i think she did a good job of presenting that point of view i don't agree with it i think it, at the very least you have to have some sort of a carve out some sort of exception to be made uh you know like they did with the debt ceiling to get this done because you can you can play nice all you want to but it's not going to matter if you know republicans take control um and they will certainly take control of the house uh in 2022 um so you know i i i do i think there's a lot of sense to what she says i just don't think it's ultimately the right position okay so you don't think that she's playing any kind of game or has any ulterior motive well, I'm sure she does. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure she has uh, donors who, uh, you know, she's uh, having to placate. It's a little tough with her to read exactly what she's up to sometimes because she doesn't really like to talk to the media if she can help it. Um, I saw a video of her ignoring one of her constituents on a plane. I don't know if you saw that. You know, she's sitting there reading a book and one of her constituents comes up to talk to her on the airplane and cinema is just completely ignoring her. Like she didn't even exist. Um, you know, I, I do think, uh, I do think a lot of this has to do with her donors, you know, uh, our elected of, uh, you know, the people we send to Washington DC to represent us don't actually represent us. They represent the donor class. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that's uh, a big part of her motivation. Um, like I said, she makes a good argument. It, I just think it's not, not correct. And I don't think it's, um, uh, maybe she doesn't fully understand what's going on in these states where these Republicans are trying to make voting, uh, much harder for the people who are not going to necessarily vote for them. I don't know if she, I don't know if she gets it, you know? Okay. So. What did you think of Lindsey Graham basically choosing sides between Mitch McConnell and Trump? Now, did he say something today? Because I may have missed this. He was on something uh, last night, one of the things, one of the Fox, whatever. And he... Uh, made the statement, I saw the clip, that he could certainly not support or vote for anybody who did not have a good working relationship with President Trump. Which I yeah, that doesn't, is, huh? Oh, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, the last time he dared, you know, he, he dared uh, question the voter fraud claims uh, when January 6th occurred. And uh, the next day he was hassled at the airport for it by Trump supporters. You know, so it doesn't surprise me. Lindsey Graham has no spine. He has no backbone. He has no integrity. Doesn't surprise me at all. So what do you think about the game Mitch is playing? Is he going to lose? Do you think he'll, I mean, it's definitely causing some, you're seeing some eruptions around the edges in the party with Trump trying to push Mitch out as majority. I mean, if they take the Senate, he'd be majority Senate leader, but you know, but definitely Trump is gunning to take Mitch down. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I think Mitch probably feels pretty safe. I mean, there's only, uh, you know, it's not, he's not, uh, yeah, I, Mitch isn't going anywhere. You know, I, I mean, he tries to walk that line, you know, he's not gonna, he's not going to endorse Trump or anything like that. But he also, when asked if he would support him, if he was the nominee, he said, yes, that he would support Trump if he was a nominee in 2024. So, you know, Mitch is never really going to turn on him fully. He just, uh, but I think he'd like, I think he'd like to put Trump in the rearview mirror, as I'm sure a lot of Republicans would privately uh, in, in Congress and in the Senate. They're just not ever going to publicly say it. January 6th committee. Are they getting more interesting? Are they running out of steam? Do you think that they're going to actually issue subpoenas to Jim Jordan and to uh, Kevin McCarthy? Do you think they'll go that far? What are your thoughts? What are you seeing coming out of there? And what do you think? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, They do have some momentum, I think. And uh, they do need to subpoena anybody who won't cooperate or refer it to the Justice Department to do that, I, I guess, technically. Yeah, they do need to do that. They need to get tough because they are going to run out of time. The, the clock is ticking. The January 6th committee goes away uh, after the 2022 uh, midterms. Uh, Republicans will uh, pick up enough seats that uh, they'll be able to make it go away. And that's it. So they they have a finite amount of time to get this done. I think it has been picking up steam and momentum, and they need to keep it up. They need to keep the pressure on. And, yeah, anybody who doesn't cooperate needs to be subpoenaed. And Jim Jordan is very, very nervous. So he needs to um, – Yeah, I, I, I want to know what he knows. He's very nervous. And uh, Kevin McCarthy, you know, I I want them to ask him, uh, you know, why did he condemn the president after January 6th and then completely reverse course? And and now he's blaming January 6th on Pelosi. You know, they need to be able to ask him that. But, uh, yeah, they need to be as tough as possible. Uh, They need to be as ruthless as the Republicans are when they're in control. And they need to move quickly. The clock is ticking on that. Once Republicans assume control, that's it. That committee goes away. So they need to do as much as they can, as quickly as they can in the time that they have. So they upped the charges against the the Oath Keeper. Mm -hmm. That it's now delicious something. Sedition, yeah. Sedition, okay. Uh, raising some of the stakes is what I'm hearing. What I see is that this is actually a little bit of a milestone that they're now tossing these words around where they weren't before. Do you think it's just the media trying to get people to clickbait, or do you think that this actually shows some kind of shift? I don't know that there's a shift. I I think they're just... uh... I think that this is just part of the process. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the RNC saying that they want the rules changed for presidential debates for 2024. <laughs> ABC pushing back saying we've never dealt with political party, the parties. We deal with the candidates that are legitimate candidates and we're not going to change. What do you think of that war of words? What's going to go on? Who do you see as the winners and the losers? I hope ABC holds their ground. I think they will. Can't let the parties push them around. Yeah. Do you think they're doing this because they actually don't want that they're afraid of having Trump in these debates? What, what what what's what's going on there, Matt? You yeah, that 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 very well could be. I mean, we lost a debate in uh, 2020. You know, there's usually three presidential debates, and we only ended up with two. So yeah, that that may be. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a there's a good chance Trump is going to be the nominee. I mean, he's probably running, 
And if he runs, he will be the nominee. That's the, there's nobody who's going to be able to challenge him. It's the cult of Trump. That's not going to change. So, yeah, they're, they're probably hedging their bets, and they want to make sure that Trump has uh, an easy uh, a glide path as possible. Yeah, I, I think that probably is a, a motivation, definitely. Yep, because he gets in as much trouble as not at this point because the people that are loyal to him are rabid. He could go there and say anything. And they would yep. dance and say delightful. But <laughs> the in between voters still could go either way. That's right. Matt, thanks for the insight. Have a happy yes. new 2022. And give my love All to All right. Dad. I will. Thanks, Dr. Kevin. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>